what's happening in Iran right now has an effect on us because we all have families in there. And uh, like with, with, the inter with the internet being shut or semi uh, working, um, it is impossible to even contact our families these times. It's been three months now and there has been two executions already, official executions of people who were arrested during the protest. So um, I think it is important uh, uh, to, um, to be their voice because I don't think Western media is covering this subject uh, um, enough. Um, but that is why we think we are, this is our duty, is our responsibility to do it for our country, for our people, for our families. So actually we are a group of students and staff of TU Delft that uh, with Iranian background, we decided to, um, since there is a lichter in, in Delft, uh, we decided to set up a Christmas tree uh, so we can, uh, like this, in the spirit of Christmas, have a memorial for people who lost their lives. Uh, in the past three months, there has been a national, uh, uh, nationwide uh, uh, protest uh, and the strikes uh, against the current regime. And unfortunately, almost 500 people uh, lost their lives. Uh, in this Christmas tree, we only managed to put uh, 40 pictures uh, because, yeah, the whole, all, of, all of them wouldn't fit. And um, so we thought it, it, it's, a, it's a nice time for us uh, first to be the voice of the people who can, who can have a voice and also to be uh, uh, grateful for the freedom that we have and we are able to do this without being killed. We thought, uh, well, the, there are some petitions that the, we want to encourage the Dutch government to take serious actions against the uh, government of Iran. And we thought this would be a nice uh, moment to um, like uh, for us as a community to gather uh, um, because it, it has been a, um, immensely difficult time for us in the past three months. So it, it is nice for our community of also it is nice to r uh, raise awareness and also because a lot of people ask me like my colleagues or my uh, uh, classmates they ask me like what can we do to help. I'm like this is a free democratic country you can contact your uh, politicians you can sign our petition so we will contact your politician to ask for uh, not to negotiate with our government uh, not my, our government but yeah. with the current government yeah. um, and uh, stop ties uh, political economical ties with them so that we can isolate them and therefore they can fall and the regime would change yeah do you plan to uh, go back to Iran like eventually or do you plan to, to live here um, well, permanently in, in, in well, the Netherlands? With this current government, I, am, I won't be safe uh, to go back in Iran. But in, if the government changes, if the, if the regime changes, yes, <laughs> that will be the bright future I am looking forward to. And, and how was the reception uh, so far like uh, with, with the Christmas tree here? Did, like, did you speak to a lot of people who noticed it? Yeah, a lot of people. And uh, it, it, was, it was a very nice experience because a lot of people were curious about it. In the beginning, some of, some of the children thought it's a, a wish, wish list uh, tree. Um, but then because we, we, yeah, we talked to the parents and they would translate. Um, so I think it, it is nice for, for the Dutch to see, um, especially at this time of the year, that uh, how amazing it is that they are living in a free country where at the same time people are losing their lives to, uh, for fight uh, with, for freedom. Yeah. Okay. And you were saying that it's, besides everything that's going on, it's also diff difficult to contact your uh, families now in, in yeah. Iran. Like, how, can you, if you want, maybe explain a little bit more about like how, how it's been for you with like, contacting your family or like how, how that's been how that has been for you like personally uh it's been it, it's extremely difficult um because um so in, in the beginning of the protest uh the government shut down internet and uh, last time this happened it was in 2019 so the internet was completely shut for a week and uh, 1500 people were killed during that protest in 2019 and uh, so we were very, very afraid that the same thing is going to happen. And internet is still very slow because they cannot completely shut internet for three months. It will affect uh, like uh, uh, economy, uh, the banking uh, connections, everything. Uh, so it did it, it not happen complete shutdown, but uh, like a few days shut down in one city, a few days shut down in another city, it's like that. 
but in general it is uh, like uh, whatsapp is uh, filtered telegram is filtered uh, instagram is filtered. basically every every application is filtered so their access outside iranian internet intranet is almost impossible and um, and and that that makes it very difficult to just have a normal chat with my mom like when i send her a text my text is received and seen after 12 hours or a day and uh, like i have a friend that her dad had a surgery but internet was completely shut in that 3 days and he had she had no idea I have uh, the, I have students. Uh, I know of, uh, students in Tel Aviv that their therapists are uh, they ha they have online sessions. Their therapists are in Iran, and now they have uh, uh, a lot of anxiety issues because they cannot connect with their uh, yeah mental health program. And uh, we are asking Tel Aviv to have a little bit of um, extending deadlines or having a little bit of flexibility with Iranian students because this is uh, immensely difficult. Uh, also because I talked to my Dutch friends and they have no idea the magnitude of the horror that is happening in Iran. Uh, and what it feels that somebody my age um, doing what I am doing here freely in Iran and he's dead now. So uh, it, it has an it has an uh, like impact uh, on Iranian people that uh, yeah it could be any of us. Yeah, I haven't seen I haven't really seen a lot of coverage recently about what's going on. I'm, I, I guess it's still still the same yeah. uh, so far. Yeah, unfortunately that is the case. Uh, um, I don't know why because we directly contact the uh, the media but they don't they don't reply our uh, emails. Um, that uh, for example there are. Um, uh, investigations, there are evidences about uh, the torture, uh, uh, torture, rape, uh, and uh, uh, um, um, yeah, killing of the arrested people. But there is nothing on Dutch media. But then there is a rumor, for example, uh, 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 spread by the uh, unknown sources. And that, that appears on Dutch media. I'm like, why? <laughs> There is accurate news, but there is fake news. Why do you cover the fake one? Yeah. Um, if we keep you know, going to work and not do this, um, yeah, people will forget it. And it, it's, yeah, it's difficult to have a normal life when uh, your mates are being executed.